Good evening. On behalf of KPCC and Southern California Public Radio, welcome to the Crawford Family Forum for tonight's program, Obamacare and You, a town hall on the Affordable Care Act. And now your host for this evening, KPCC's healthcare correspondent, Stephanie O'Neill. Thank you. And thank you all for coming. I'd like to start first by asking you, how many of you totally understand the Affordable Care Act? Raise your hand. <laughs> oh, there's one, <laughs> sort of shyly. <laughs> and uh, how many of you feel pretty confused by it all? A number of you, yeah, I have to put my hand up too. Um, so I'm really pleased that we have Emily Bazar here. She's fantastic, I love her column. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about her. She's a senior writer for the California Healthcare Foundation Center for Health Reporting, part of the USC Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism. She covers stories about the Affordable Care Act, Medi-Cal budget cuts, and children's dental care, among other topics. She also writes a column called Ask Emily, answering questions about the Affordable Care Act. It's published in more than 25 newspapers in print and online, and on radio station websites across the state. She appears regularly on KPCC's Take Two, as well as on programs on several other public radio stations. She's written for the San Francisco Chronicle, the Daily News of Los Angeles, the Sacramento Bee, the San Jose Mercury News, among others. So welcome, Emily. Thank you. We're really ha glad to have you here. Thank you, I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you. So what we figured we would do tonight is just start by asking some basic questions. Um, I'll ask these questions of Emily. Emily will answer them. We wa also want to get to your questions as well. Um, and we just want to lay the groundwork about what this law is and what, it's, what it does. So I think the first question we want to ask is, why should I care about the Affordable Care Act? Right. Um, well, as most of you probably know, Obamacare changes the rules of the game, basically, for, for all of us, for every single one of us in this room. Starting on January 1st, you guys all know this, this is pretty basic, but Obamacare will require almost everybody to have health insurance. Otherwise, you will face a tax penalty. That's brand new. And that's a kind of a big deal. Uh, so. The tax penalty, should I get into that a little bit? Yeah, because there's something interesting about this tax penalty um, that we wanted to touch on. Right. Um, so if you don't have insurance, the tax penalty starts next year at $95 per person or 1% of your income, whichever is greater. And every year it goes up until it hits Two, uh, excuse me, $695 per person, or 2.5% of your in income, whichever is greater. And children are half that rate, so children, too, who are uninsured will have to pay the tax penalty, and basically the penalties are assessed on your federal income taxes. And the thing about it, too, is people will say, and I've heard people say, well, you know what, I'm not going to pay. Uh, I'm not going to buy the insurance. I'm just going to pay the $95. But if you make $50,000 a year, you're going to pay $500. And then the next year, it, it goes up to 2.5%, so you're paying $1,250 uh, a year. So it, it will cost, and then it, it keeps going up. So. Yeah, that's something to keep in mind. Right, it depends on your individual situations, obviously your own incomes. So think about it carefully. Mm -hmm. um, and then we want to find out too, people ask, you know, am I exempt from this law? There are people who are exempt, so who are they? Right, exactly. It's, most of you are not exempt, but there are some exceptions. Um, and I'm gonna try to go from memory, although I have my ch a cheat sheet over here. Uh, if uh, members of federally recognized Native American tribes are exempt, people who are incarcerated, so that's not any of you yet. <laughs> um, people who, I'm, I'm starting, I won't, I'm gonna skip, skip here, but I'm trying to go by memory. Um, people who don't make enough money to be required to file federal income taxes, you're exempt. People who, who can't find affordable health coverage, and thank you. And health coverage, pay attention to this, because this will come up a little bit later in the discussion. What is not affordable health coverage? In this case, it's anything that, your, if your premium costs more than 8% of your annual household income. So in this case, the definition of unaffordability is 8%. Also, people are exempt if they are members of, religi of a religious group that doesn't believe in accepting insurance benefits. 
And you just can't say I'm an anti-Obamacarian, for instance, but it has to be recognized by the Social Security Administration. And let me think, there's one more. You can, you can apply for a hardship exemption, and you have to do this through the Health Insurance Exchange, Covered California. And these can be a variety of things, like if you had to file for ban bankruptcy in the last six months, or if you were homeless part of the year. Um, uh, so that's another category. What am I forgetting? If you're not in the country legally. Oh, yes, of course. I'm sorry. Yeah, if you don't live here legally, um, if you're not a legal immigrant or U.S. citizen, you, you're exempt, but it's... I wouldn't necessarily think of it as getting a benefit by being exempt. It's that the idea that the government is, doesn't want to be providing health care for people who are in the country illegally. And the, the law brings a bunch of new insurance rules uh, to play. And so some of them, you've, you've heard a lot about these, I'm sure, but we're going to go over those. So what are some right. of the key, the key new rules that we're facing? Right, exactly. So remember I said that Obamacare changes the rules of the game for you guys. It also changes the rules of the game for the insurance companies. And the first big thing, I think this is probably the biggest thing, is insurance companies are no longer allowed to deny coverage to people with pre-existing health conditions. So if you've had a heart attack or a stroke or cancer, I've even heard of cases where people were denied because of asthma, because it's a chronic condition. Um, they can't deny you anymore. And going along with that, they also can't charge you more which they do now if you have a health problem. And I was curious real quickly, Emily, how many of you have ever been denied for a pre-existing condition or had to pay more for a pre-existing condition? And have, 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 there's also, it's not just chronic conditions, right? Like if you were, I have somebody in a story tomorrow who was treated for sciatica, back pain, and five years earlier and it hadn't recurred and she had a pre-existing condition. Exactly. So. It can be an episodic thing, and yeah, a one-time event, and, and they can still deny you right now, but that changes come January 1st. Um, there are also other rules that insurance companies have to abide by now. Um, they can no longer charge older people as much more as they want compared with the youngest people. So, you know, I've heard varying things, and maybe Stephanie knows the answer. I've heard that right now the limit they can charge older people versus younger people is five times more, but others have said, wait, Tom, do you know the answer to this? Three, Three times. No, 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 uh, right now, right now. Oh. There's no yeah. limit, right. So there's no limit on how much insurance companies now can charge older people versus younger people, but starting January 1st, they can charge no more than three times more the oldest person versus the youngest person. Um, let's see, some other changes. They, they can charge you more, uh, or they can vary the price based on where you live, and California is chopped into 19 different geographic regions, and the prices for in health insurance and the plans vary by region. Uh, they can charge families more than individuals. And in some states, they can charge smokers more than non-smokers, but that's not happening in California. Right. And so, so the main categories are uh, geography, uh, your age, and your family size. Right. And, and what am I missing? Wait, what are we missing? Gender. 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 No, no, they no can't charge women more than men. Yeah. That's really yes. Right. Yes. Well, there's no more. So, so, so younger people, I'm pointing at my daughter, uh, will be paying potentially more because of that age. Now there's only, you can charge the eldest, as she said, three times more than the youngest. So the, the younger people will be perhaps charged more depending upon their coverage. And also women will not be charged more. Um, they were before because of the potential for um, pregnancies and other things. Um, so there's a lot of things that will no longer be you, you won't have to fill out this long paperwork about your pre-existing conditions and all this other information. They're just they're basing it on some pretty simple criteria. So exactly. Um, and then also there are these ten essential health benefits, and I'm going to put a slide up. There they are. There they are. You um, guys, have you heard about these benefits in the last week or two in, in the news at all? No, not necessarily. We're going to get to this uh, later, but this comes up. All these cancellations you guys have probably been hearing about and maybe you've experienced yourselves, they have something to do with these benefits. But basically, um, these benefits, Obamacare requires that all health plans um, cover certain benefits, and they're called the essential health benefits, and they're 10 categories, and here they are. So they range from pediatric service, excuse me, <laughs> pediatric services to maternity coverage. We've got emergency care, uh, mental health care, which is um, something that's interesting and new, uh, 
Prescription the, drugs. Prescription drugs, rehabilitative care, that sort of thing, surgery, hospitalization, that sort of thing. So the fact that there is going to be, that plans have to cover certain things is, is also new and important. Um, you guys may have heard that up till pretty recently, plans didn't have to cover maternity coverage, for instance, maternity care. So that's changing. Right. So it's just it's just spreading around the pool of all the things that people, uh, you know, some of the basic health care uh, issues that people have. Um, so we're going to move on to covered California. Now, this is really important, something I want to bring up because I keep hearing this. With all the focus that's been on the federal glitchy website, right, uh, healthcare.gov, and then we have covered California. Now, people get confused. I've heard people say, well, I'm going to shop them both and see where I get a better um, plan, but that's not how it works. How it works is the states that did not opt to create their own um, sites like we did in California, they're now under the federal site. So if you go on, and you may have gone on to healthcare.gov, um, you'll say, what state are you from? And you'll say California. It'll just direct you right back to coveredca.com. And that's where you'll find, and that, that website, you know, relative to the federal website, really works. So uh, well, relative to the federal website, I said. <laughs> Got some people shaking their heads no. <laughs> it's and all I've relative. Heard from, yeah, I've heard from plenty of really trouble. Really, four hours, yeah. 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 You know, it is, It's and they keep you know, bringing it down and trying to fix it. There are issues, and the, there's, you know, I've covered uh, numerous stories on the doctor search tool isn't working. We'll get into all that later. But, but anyway, so we here in California, forget healthcare.gov. We have covered California. Sometimes it works well, and sometimes it doesn't work so well. Um, so we want to talk about covered California. And um, let's see. So do you want to touch on the, what it provides, the, the number of health plans that there are? Right. Are you guys familiar with covered California at this point? Uh, yes, you know what it is. So it's, it's a new, uh, you know, when you hear the word exchange, it made me think, for instance, of the New York Stock Exchange. But it's not a place. It's, a, it's not a building. It's a, it's a new marketplace, a new mall, basically, that sells health insurance throughout California. And some people will uh, qualify for discounts, basically. And this, uh, there are 11 health plans that are going to be sold across California, but not all health plans will be available in all areas, as I said before. Some are from large insurers like Kaiser, and some are from very limited, uh, or from not, not, not limited insurers, but insurers that serve a limited ge geographic area like the Contra Costa Health Plan or here the LA um, Care Health Plan. And uh, basically, uh, these plans are going to be sold to people, individuals and families. We'll get into who can buy and who can't and what's available, but basically individuals, families, and also small businesses can purchase on this exchange, Covered California. And some people will qualify for these discounts I mentioned. They're tax credits, actually. Is it time to get into tax credits? Uh, sure, you can. How about if you touch real quickly on there's the tiers? Yeah, the tiers. Okay. So it just makes it a little bit easier to shop for insurance when you go, if you're looking on the site like right. this. Right. So Covered California, remember those essential health benefits we showed you? All of the plans on Covered California have all of those benefits. In fact, all of the plans on Covered California have identical benefits. They're called standardized benefits. Those benefits, and, and the same goes for the open market, basically. The same plans that are sold on Covered California are also sold on the open, open market. Now, um, the difference you know that there's different prices. The differences in prices come from the different insurers, but also there are four tiers of plans or four levels of coverage, basically, that you can choose from. And these guys have named them the metal tiers. So there's bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. And basically, um, bronze, again, they're all cover the same thing medically, but bronze covers the least amount of your medical uh, costs. Bronze cover 60% of your medical costs on average. Silver covers 70, gold covers 80, platinum covers 90. So what that means is, so for bronze, those are going to offer you the cheapest monthly premiums. However, you're also going to have the higher, highest out-of-pocket costs with the bronze plans. You have a $6,400 basically um, out-of-pocket maximum for the year. You have higher uh, deduct, uh, excuse me, co-pays and that sort of thing. So you're going to be paying more for the services uh, and out-of-pocket for bronze than you would 
for platinum, you're going to pay a lot more per month for platinum, but when you get the services, you have a lower uh, out-of-pocket maximum and that sort of thing, and you're paying less to see the doctor. Um, people, you got to think about it for yourself if you're making these kinds of choices. Do you go to the doctor a lot? Do you, people with chronic conditions, for instance, might think about a platinum plan, uh, but I always wonder about that because how do you know if you're going to have a car accident, you know? How can you plan for that? But you're going to just have to do the best you can. But you'll also know that you'll have a maximum out of pocket. So it's exactly. not going to be these bills that, you know, overtake you potentially and cause bankruptcy. So that was part of the idea, too, is to protect you from that. Um, but also we have the, uh, on the slide up there, we have the um, preventive care uh, co-pays. So there's no cost on any of the four plans you can see for basic preventive care. So I was talking to some folks today for my story, and they were paying, like this, this woman I spoke with was paying about $400 a year for her mammogram. And she had to pay it out of pocket because she had a, a, a mini med plan or a really skinny plan that didn't provide all these protections. So now she's going to have a plan. She's switching over to a silver plan on the Uncovered California. And she'll have a plan that covers that as, with no out-of-pocket costs to her. And so that's going to save her money. She's paying slightly more on her premium. She doesn't qualify qualify for subsidies, but she's going to be making that up. She says with one mammogram, she'll make that up. So I do want to point something out, though. I'm looking at the same thing you are. It's just easier to read. Yeah. Look at the bronze plan, for instance, for the lab testing and x-ray co-pays. They're 30% of the cost. That can be a lot of money. Then if you look at the platinum, you're talking either 20 or $40. I mean, an x-ray can be hundreds of dollars or more, as, as can lab testing. So Think very carefully about these decisions you're making and uh, how much you're willing to spend. I know there is a limit, but $6,400 is a lot of money to spend out of pocket any year for and anybody. There's also a value to um, to being on, they're kind of pushing people to the silver plan. We're going to get into that here, I believe. Right. Or do you want to talk about that at this? It's up to you. Okay. Well, let's talk <laughs> about that. So um, the uh, the silver plan, you want to discuss how that's where you get your subsidies and that's where you get your cost sharing, right? Um, well, let me, there's two forms. Did you guys know that there are two forms of financial assistance you can get uh, from co uh, through Covered California? How many knew that? Couple. Mm -hmm. I didn't figure this out until pretty recently, yeah. actually. And <laughs> um, it's, it's another yet another complication of the law. Okay, so I'm going to throw out a bunch of numbers now. These tax credits that I mentioned to you guys can lower the cost of monthly premiums for some people. And those people are the ones whose incomes qualify. And basically, uh, you have, your income has to fall between 138% and 400% of the federal poverty level. And I know that means nothing to people. Zero, right? It's like, what is so that? I will tell you the few examples that I've got. I think I've got it actually by memory. Um, that's about 40. $6,000 for an individual, 400% of the federal poverty level this year is about 46,000, 45, 46,000 for an individual and about 94,000 for a family of four. And you can go check out the federal poverty level guidelines if you've got, you know, different different uh, family sizes than that. Um, it's also an easier way sometimes is thinking of it as you're four times the poverty level. So you're four times the poverty level. Right, so, right. exactly. And so basically, these tax credits are on a sliding scale. If you have, uh, this is the problem of being a hand talker here. Um, if, you ha if you are closer to the 138% of the federal poverty level, if you make less money, you're going to get a bigger tax credit, uh, a lot bigger, in fact. And that's, and that's about 16, dollars something dollars. Is that the 138%? Uh, Yes, I believe so. Yeah, something actually. around sixteen thousand yes. dollars. It's good to know, especially if you've got kids who you know might fall under that, and they could qualify as for well. an individual. Yeah. Right, exactly. Um, so, right. If you and then if you're closer to the four hundred percent of the federal poverty level, or four times the federal poverty level, as Stephanie was saying, you're going to get a much smaller tax credit um, that you can apply to those plans, and you can buy any plan you want and apply those credits to the plan, but. You know, like I said, the bronze plan's cheaper per month, so you might be able to cover your whole premium for the bronze plan, but just remember, you might have to pay on the back end. So that's the first form of financial assistance. And the second form of financial assistance are called cost-sharing subsidies. And these cost-sharing subsidies, it, it, this stuff makes me want to <laughs> the numbers. tear my just, hair out. It makes me with crazy. Us. <laughs> yeah. So basically, these are available not to, to, to some people within that 
uh, range of 138 and 400. Cost sharing subsidies will go to people who make between 139% of the federal poverty level and 250% of the federal poverty level. And what these will do is they will lower your out of pocket, out of pocket costs. So they will lower your co-pays and your out of pocket maximums. Can we pull that one up? That, oh yeah, that let's slide see. up. Um, let's see where it is. Is this the one? We may not have, have had that. Yeah, thing. this is it. Okay. So if uh, you may probably don't remember, but to see a specialist for for instance, on the silver plan cost uh, without these cost sharing subsidies is sixty five dollars. That's your copay. But if you qualify, again, these are on a sliding scale, so the less you make, the more help you're going to get. If you qualify, you'd pay anywhere between $5 and $50 for a specialist visit. Now, again, in order to get these, you have to fall between 139 and 250 at the federal poverty level, and you have to choose a silver plan. You can't choose bronze, gold, or platinum. So that's what you need to know. That no words need to. <laughs> you guys get what I'm saying. So yeah. the website, too, will guide you to that. It'll tell you who, who, who all has been on the website, coveredca.com. OK. So it will tell you, you know, which one is probably a better plan for you. And you can see that because of the cost sharing. And um, silver enhanced, that means blue? Silver enhanced is that mean that means the silver enhanced is the ones for people who qualify for the cost sharing subsidies and the 73 again it's that sliding scale thing so that's where uh, that's how what percentage of the costs it would cover based on what your income is so they have silver 94 silver 73 uh silver 87. yeah okay so i'd like to jump now to some tips that we'd like to share with you when you are shopping first of all actually let me stop for a moment how many people um, believe that how many people are buying their own insurance through the individual market or know somebody has a family member who's doing that right now the individual market I mean you don't you, yeah you don't get job based now or you will be you don't get job based okay I'm trying to get a sense there's a number of people here in the room who are getting it so when you go shopping on on the sites there's some some things that you you do you do want to know about so let's talk about those a moment right yeah. exactly one very important thing, let's say you have insurance uh, from the open market right now, and let's just say I'm picking this out of a hat that your insurer is Anthem Blue Cross, and you want to see if you can get a better deal from Covered California. And look, lo and behold, you could. You can get some tax credits. Um, don't assume that your doctor is... Uh, the doctor that you have now through Anthem Blue Cross is going to be in the plan, Anthem Blue Cross plan that Covered California offers. You can't assume that. Basically, these insurers are off offering what they're calling like narrow networks, which basically means they're giving you limited choices for doctors and hospitals. So uh, there is a doctor search tool on the Covered California website and a hospital search tool. Use it, but I've heard complaints that people have been having problems um, finding <laughs> whether or not their doctor is covered or not. Right. The thing is, I don't, uh, the hospital search tool, I think, will come on even later. I haven't been on to check recently, but the, even Covered California is saying, you know, go ahead and check it out, but then also call your doctor's office. And don't be surprised if your doctor's office doesn't actually know the answer. There's so much confusion. <laughs> so there you won't, you may not get a definitive answer, but you definitely want to start searching around if, if having, maintaining the doctor you have is important. And the reason why that happened in part was because the insurance companies are negotiating rates with doctors and provider networks um, that are a little bit less so that they can provide this, you know, this is what they're saying, that so that they can provide this more affordable insurance. Um, and not everybody is being included, but there's going to be, that's going to be a, a big story as it starts getting, you know, as we start moving forward away from just all the stuff about a federal website that doesn't work. So um, what else should we, should we warn them about? <laughs> now, when you uh, apply on Covered California for, or, or even on the open market for uh, coverage, estimate your, or it's Covered California actually, um, you're going to be asked for your estimated 2014 income. Estimate it carefully. I know it's hard because there's a lot of people who don't know what their income are, will be or their freelance or their contract, whatever, but do try to do as best as you can because these tax credits are actually kind of play, paid in advance. They're applied to your premium. So you don't have to pay full price 
premiums every month, you'll pay the discounted price. But if you make a lot more money than you anticipated, you're going to have to owe the IRS back. Conversely, if you make a lot less money, you will be given a credit. Um, there is a limit to the credits, I mean, to, excuse me, to how much you'll have to pay back if you do have to pay back, but still, that's not a happy place to be if you're, you know, come tax time. So do your best uh, estimating your income. And speaking of income, one of the most common questions I get is what counts as income? And this is yet another thing that made me want to pull out my hair. Um, so it's called you will be using for Medi-Cal eligibility and to, uh, for your, to figure out whether you're eligible for tax credits, modified adjusted gross income, M-A-G-I. They call it MAGI. And this is, for most people, thankfully, going to be adjusted gross income, which you can find on your uh, federal income taxes. However, not for everybody. So modified adjusted gross income includes, you would have to add your, I'm going by memory here, tax-exempt interest, tax-exempt Social Security benefits, and tax-exempt foreign income. It would not include some things like SSI, like child support, and veterans uh, disability payments, for instance. It's complicated. And, and if you ask me any more than that, my answer will be, I don't know. It'll be I, consult your tax, your tax person. Exactly. Right? <laughs> that was going to be my next point. And you can Google Ask Emily and Magi. And um, I have links in my column to a couple very helpful um, explainers of what's in Magi. In case you're, you're tempted to Google Magi, be careful because <laughs> there are multiple definitions of MAGI for various laws. So there's an Obamacare MAGI, there's a tuition MAGI, just, just be careful. <laughs> so. Okay, and then do you want to t touch on dependents? Who's, yeah. Okay. Yeah, as you, can, as you can tell, Obamacare is going to kind of, it, it has a lot to do with taxes, and it's going to make your taxes more complicated, which I'm sure you're thrilled about. Um, basically, though, when it asks you who, who can be on a family plan, that is, you can include anybody you claim as a dependent on your family plan. That doesn't just have to be, you know, this nuclear mom, dad, uh, biological child thing. If you can claim your aging parents and, uh, as dependents, they can be counted. Uh, you can ch claim children who are not biological children, but it's, it's dependent on the, ta the definition of a tax dependent. So again, if you're not sure, consult a tax uh, expert. And finally, this one's important. Married couples have to file jointly if you want to be if you want to be eligible for tax credits. You can buy on the exchange, but if you want to be eligible, you have to file jointly. And that's even if only one member of the couple wants to get a plan from Covered California. So some people say, "Well, that's not fair. Why should both of our incomes count toward that?" And it does. Right. So so then we're going to move to folks who we, we're going to get back to those numbers, those awful numbers for just a moment, but that 138% of the poverty level. Again, that's about just almost $16,000 for an individual. And if, if you or one of your loved ones uh, makes that amount of money or less, um, then you would qualify for uh, expanded Medi-Cal in California. So the states have the option of expanding Medicaid, which is the state-federal partnership um, for, uh, for low-income folks. And um, in California agreed to do it, and so for three years the feds will pay for it. And um, so there, there's a number of people who will qualify for this new expanded uh, Medi-Cal. So let's just talk about that briefly. That also happens on January 1st. Exactly. And this is a a big deal. You know, more than a million Californians are expected to become newly eligible for this program. That's a lot of people. Uh, right now, Medi-Cal serves more than 8 million Californians. They're talking about adding 1.4 million more. Um, and this is, it's not really covered very much. It's kind of this lesser known thing. But there are some changes happening to the uh, Medi-Cal program to expand it. One is the income threshold is rising to 138% of the federal poverty level, as Stephanie said. So it, may, it allows people to make a little bit more money and uh, be eligible. 
But I think the really big deal is that it opens the programs to childless adults. So that's people who don't have kids. So that can be single, older adults. It could be, as we will discuss later, college students. It can be uh, anybody who doesn't have kids who also meet the income, um, income test. And uh, for those of you who want a little bit more intricate information about Medi-Cal, the asset tests for most people go away. So the, your assets, your home, you know, your home and car and that sort of thing, that won't count against you anymore. And also, you're eligible, you're ineligible for tax credits from Covered California. Um, Even if right. you are just eligible for Medi-Cal, I got this question in the bathroom before the, <laughs> before the session started. <laughs> Even if you are merely eligible for Medi-Cal, you cannot get tax credits um, from Covered California. You can buy from Covered California. I know of people who want to, but you'd have to pay full price. And also, we should touch on um, as well that if you are eligible, you fall into those um, salary ranges or those income ranges that make you eligible for the cost sharing or the subsidies, the up, upfront premium subsidies, um, you can only get them by buying a plan on the Covered California website. So if you go outside, now you can always shop outside in the individual market, but if you do that, then you forego your ability to um, capture those um, those subsidies and the cost sharing. Um, let's touch on folks who make more than, so we've talked a lot about Covered California is really great uh, for folk, can be great for folks financially who meet those certain um, income levels. But folks who make more than four times the poverty level, what happens to them? Right, and this, again, this is something that we'll discuss a little bit when we talk about those cancellations. But if you make more than 400% of the federal poverty level, you can still purchase uh, from Covered California. You can purchase on the open market. But again, you're ineligible for tax credit, so you'd have to pay full cost. Right, and then again, I have a story tomorrow with these folks who my premise was, let's see what's happening. What are they finding, people who have, um, have, have earned more, who are earning more than 400%. And um, it just so happened that as that was going on, I was preparing that story, the cancellations started coming. <laughs> the news about the cancellations started coming. So um, do you think this is a really big surprise, these cancellations? I mean, we know the president said there will not be cancellations. You can keep your policy if you want to have them, is what he said. But he was referring, uh, well, I you don't know what he was referring to, but he, he ended up saying something that got America pretty upset and got Democrats and Republicans upset. So um, I think he was referring to people like me mostly um, who get insurance through their employers. Uh, most of us, and, and, and we're still the majority of people, right now in California about 53% of people get their insurance through their employers. How many of you do? I think most people Large here. Number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, for the most part, unless your employer decides to drop a plan or whatever, which they've always been able to do, you know, I still have the same choice at least. Um, now, the people getting these cancellations are the people in the individual market. And yeah, I mean, I was always very perplexed by this. And I just feel like, uh, duh, you know, how, how come I didn't really see this coming in a better way? But if you have to have plans cover those essential, 10 essential health benefits, a lot of the plans on the market now don't cover them. They don't include maternity coverage, or they don't, well, actually in California they do now, but they don't include certain things, or, or they don't cover 60, a minimum of 60% of your medical expenses, which is another uh, Obamacare requirement. So insurers were having to upgrade their plans and basically cancel the old plans. That's a lot of what is going on here. People are getting these canceled, are getting their plans canceled because they didn't meet these requirements. And insurers will claim and say that it costs more to offer more of these benefits. There's also the idea, remember we talked about pre-existing conditions. Now there's going to be a lot more sick people in the pool. And so the, the idea of insurance is that we all share risk, the healthy and the sick together. And it doesn't really work if you just have only sick people in the pool. So, so again, the, the, the people who were healthier and maybe not paying as much on the individual market for their plans, they're going to see that kind of equilibrium kind of hit them in their pocketbook, I think. And I think if you have right now one of those um, catastrophic coverage plans, so a really high deductible plan that you've got because you're like, just in case something big happens, I want this. But otherwise, I really don't see the doctor I pay out of pocket pretty much. Um, you may see your your 
your price go up because that's a, a very different plan than what you would be getting under the Affordable Care Act. So they're much more robust plans. So so you would see that. Um, folks I've talked to who um, had plans, you know, some were sort of bare bones and otherwise. Um, some had, some saw their prices go up. They shopped on the covered California marketplace. Some saw them go down substantially. I have one, one person who's going for a lesser amount of coverage, but a much lower premium. So she says overall, that's just, she feels it's going to save her, you know, money. So again, this is that sort of that math thing. You've got to look at it. You've got to make some, you know, how comfortable are you with certain risk and sort of look at that. How much do you use the medical system? Um, do you have prescription drugs? Those kinds of things you're going to really want to look at if you have a plan that's been canceled and if California decides to let those stay. There's a bunch of questions and logistical issues that are going to have to be determined before we know if our state is going to be able to follow what the president is Does anybody asking. here, ha have? Uh, did anybody get their plan canceled? A couple? So two hands raised? Three? Four? Okay. And it, so it, the decision is going to be made this week by Covered California. In fact, they're meeting on Thursday and they plan to make the decision about whether or not California will allow your canceled plans to extend through 2014. So should, we should know by the end of the week. Well, it's still going on, but the, the, the plan is still going on, but they said that they, we got a letter that came today that said your plan will be canceled. As of January 1st, right? Yeah, right. What, what was just said in the audience is that the, the, the letters are saying your plan will be canceled as of January 1st, but that you can choose a new plan. And some of the insurers are offering plans on their own. They're saying, hey, we've got this other plan. And in fact, if you've been in the individual market, you're probably used to cancellations. Hey, we're not doing that plan anymore. Here's another plan for you to consider. They're doing that, some of them. And you know, the good idea is now you have options. So go ahead and shop. Go to coveredca.com. Com and check it out and see if, if you might find a better plan there, you know, that's more effective for you, more, more uh, cost effective and so forth. Um, I want to ask how many people here are on Medicare? A few of you. Mom? <laughs> she won't raise her hand. <laughs> no, I'm busted. Okay. So, um, so Medicare, I want to just touch on that real quickly. Um, so if you have Medicare, you're considered covered under the Obamacare mandate and you don't need to buy other insurance. So that can get confusing too. It's like this open enrollment happened. And in fact, open enrollment for Medicare is happening now. It's that time when you can change your plan and look at, you know, if you want to change it, look at, you know, if it still serves your needs. But that's completely different from what's going on under the Affordable Care Act. So um, if, you're, if you have Medicare, you can relax, but you probably have a family member who needs to know this stuff, like a young adult or college student. So, <laughs> um, I'm sorry? It's, it's, that's not going to, unless the, the, your insurer decides not to offer that plan anymore, which they can do. But not a whole lot changes for Medicare compared with some of the other changes. You, uh, preventive, most preventive services are going to be covered for free, like colonoscopies and mammograms. In fact, they already are. The donut hole where you pay more money for those prescription benefits over time, by 2020, that's going to close completely. Um, the, your medical benefits, I keep getting these emails from people saying, I've heard that Obamacare is going to deny people with Medicare knee surgeries and, or hip surgeries. or it's, it's just not true. Um, your medical benefits are not going to change. And then finally, there, some people will be paying more, the higher premiums. Right now, the higher income earners pay a higher premium for Parts B and D, so for the medical services and the prescription drug coverage. I am not going to get into the details of it, but more people will, gonna, will be paying that. So basically, they're going to expand who's going to pay that. But I, I'm not going to get into the, the technical. It's too complicated. And to be honest with you, I don't understand it. So, <laughs> but more people would be paying it. So. so there are some wonderful new opportunities for young adults and college students right now. And one of the things you may have heard is that if you have an adult child, um, the law requires or the law mandates that you're allowed to keep that um, adult child on your plan should you choose to do so. But then again, you need to look and shop. My daughter and I looked at that, and it was less expensive uh, before she got her price increase from Kaiser. It was less expensive for her to be on a separate plan than to join my plan. So there's, there's many options. That's one of them. And what else should we touch on here? Actually, young adults and college students have a lot of choices, maybe more choices under Obamacare than any other group. So as Stephanie said, 
uh, they can stay on their parents' insurance po insurance policies, and hundreds of thousands across the country, millions have taken advantage of this already. Another option if they attend college is to use their university health plans. Most of these will meet the Obamacare uh, insurance requirement. But again, shop around. My editor, who just spoke here earlier, got a check, or excuse me, a bill in the mail for 770 bucks or something like that for a semester for his daughter. So it can be expensive. Say again? Prices go up. And prices go up, right. Yeah. Yeah, prices go up. The universities are going up, but with all the plans. Oh, and they're going up now. too, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they'll even go up. Exactly. Um, as I mentioned before, Medi-Cal may be an interesting new option for college students. A lot of college students don't work full time. Many of them don't have children, so that's an option they should look at. However, if your uh, parent can claim you as a dependent on their taxes, then their income will count towards your income, and that will make you, that will affect your Medi-Cal eligibility. It will likely make you ineligible. Well, it could make you ineligible. So there's the caveat there. And um, young There's people, nothing easy in this law, so bear with us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so tired. Uh, um, and um, young adults also, even if they get insurance plans offered to them through their universities, they can say no to those, and they can purchase on Covered California. And they maybe can be eligible for tax credits if they meet the income requirements, and their parents can't claim them as a dependent on their taxes. If their parents claim them as a, de as a dependent on their taxes, they are not eligible for the tax credits. And if they're even eligible to be claimed as a dependent, but they're not claimed as a dependent, they're ineligible for tax credits. Talk to your ca tax accountant. <laughs> I don't know why, and you guys, I mean, you know, I'm, I don't get into the politics of this law. I just get into what it does and what it doesn't do, and I just, it makes me upset, uh, you know, how, how complicated it is. So um, another question is, you had, there was a number of you with job-based insurance. Is there anybody who really does not like their job-based insurance, which wishes they had something different? Okay, there's one. Just one. Hands, two, three. A two. <laughs> three, four. <laughs> we won't tell your employer or anything like that. Um, but I just want to know because what if they hate their job-based insurance? <laughs> Can they go to Covered California and shop? Okay, everybody gird yourselves, you know, we're, we're in for another one here. This is actually a very common question I get. Um, if you don't like your job-based insurance, or if it's too expensive um, from your perspective, you are free to ditch it. You can ditch it and go and buy on Covered California. However, if you want to be eligible for tax credits, you have to pass two tests. The first test you already know about, and that's the income guidelines, right? Remember we talked about 138 and 400% of the federal poverty level. So you have to fall within that range. The second test is that you have to prove as the employee that your health, your employer's health insurance is, quote, unaffordable. Now, do you remember I mentioned unaffordable earlier in the talk? And I said that that was, uh, you have to show that your insur insurance would be unaffordable. It was 8% of your household income. Well, this definition of unaffordable is different. You have to prove that the cost of the premium for the employee alone, for him or herself only, would be more than 9.5% of your annual household income. Or... You have to show that your uh, job-based insurance doesn't cover or covers less than 60% of your medical expenses. So you have to prove one of those two things to show it's unaffordable. I know this is hard. And folks who are, you might find that if you work in the retail food industry or something where they have these plans that, you know, just really don't provide a lot of coverage that you might qualify there, right? I mean, those are kinds of... The, places where you might find folks qualifying. I don't know. I don't know, to be honest with you, because, you know, we're going to get into the kid glitch mm -hmm. next, right? Sure. Um, it just depends. Some plans, some plans will offer the employee an affordable plan, but then they'll, they'll really jack up the cost for children or for spouses, for dependents, basically. And this creates, um, or this doesn't create, but there's a problem with this, def this whole, you know, unaffordability definition in the law. It's called the kid glitch. And basically, it's this. This one's a hard one to explain. 
remember I said that to prove that your insurance is unaffordable, you have to show that the cost for the premiums for the employee alone is more than 9.5% of your annual household income. If you add the cost of your dependents, if, if it's affordable for you alone, then your insurance is affordable. Even if you add the cost of the premiums for your dependents, and that makes it more than 9.5% of your annual income, it doesn't matter. They, they're, if it's only affordable, if it's affordable for you alone, then your whole family does not qualify for tax credits. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, it's hard. So basically, again, the test is for the employee alone. If, you, if it's affordable for you, then no matter how much your independents would have to pay for their insurance, it doesn't matter. You will not qualify for the, for the credits. So you can only use yourself as the measure. In other words, yourself, how much it costs for you to have that insurance. That's the measure, whether it's affordable. But if it costs a lot more to have family members on there, and that's more than 9.5% of your income, too bad. You're out of luck. Kid glitch. You're in the kid glitch. Yeah, and it's, it's, a, it is a, it's a glitch that uh, there's concern that will... Well, the good news is, and, and they don't, I don't think that the state-run marketplace wants all of us to do this, but you can also buy insurance policies for different members of your family. I mean, potentially, correct? I mean, you don't have to be, you don't have to go, like, you don't have to have everybody on one policy. So you can have you and your child on one policy and your husband and another child and another policy. That's, that's what I've heard, but. I don't know that that's true. Again, it goes by dependence. Okay. And we need to check into yeah, that. Yeah, I'm not sure about that because I know that, for instance, if you're an unmarried couple. An it, unmarried couple, you can do is, it individually. You can do it separate. Right. Well, you have to. Right, you have to. Yeah, and so if you're an unmarried couple, it would be whoever, the ch and you have children, your children, the, the person who claims the children as dependents would apply as a family with the children, and the other person would apply as an individual. I don't know about the case that you brought up, though. Yeah, so there's, but there's options, things you can do if you do have the job-based insurance, but pretty much they're, you're probably going to want to stick with your job-based insurance. Okay, and then we want to touch on open enrollment now is going to go through um, March 31st. If you're buying um, coverage for open enrollment, not for Medicare and not for your employer, your job-based um, insurance, those are different open enrollment periods. We have those on KPCC to kind of, you know, help you figure that out. But if you are buying on the individual market this year and up through uh, March 31st of 2014, you're going to be able to purchase the insurance. And something that's very important is, you know, people will say, and I've talked to folks, they're saying, you know what, I'm not doing this. If I get sick, I'll get insurance. So what about those folks? If they get sick, can they just turn around and buy insurance in the ambulance or anywhere else? Right. You guys know that basically... Um, <laughs> um, I'll have your policy there. Credit card, please. <laughs> well, I actually have gotten questions like this saying, if Obamacare doesn't discriminate against you, it if you don't have, you know, pre-existing conditions, can I just, you know, sign up for insurance when I'm in the hospital? And the answer is, if you fall within the open enrollment period, you can. <laughs> but if you're, if you, if this happens to you after the enrollment, pe open enrollment period, you're out of luck. So these open enrollment periods are very important, and it's really important to remember that if you bought on the individual market, this changes, right, Tom? That it used to be that you could kind of buy and switch and change any time. No more, starting now, basically. The open enrollment period for the exchange and for the open market are going to be the same. And this year, it's between now, well, October 1st and March 31st. But in subsequent years, it's going to be the same as Medicare, which is October 15th through December 7th. Um, so you pay attention to those because that's your only chance unless you have what's known as a qualifying event. And that's if you get married or you get divorced or a child is born or your child is adopted, then you get a special enrollment period in the middle of the year. You can, you can sign up or change your insurance at that moment. But otherwise, you know, a heart attack or a car, a car accident is not a qualifying event. And also, too, if you do sign up, you know, we're saying jokingly, in the hospital, you wouldn't have insurance that day. So when you sign up, if you sign up before the 15th of the month or up to the 15th of any given month, then it becomes, your insurance becomes effective on the first of the following month. If you sign up from the 16th to the end of that month, then it doesn't become effective till the first um, day of two months away. 
So that's important to keep in mind too. If you need to buy insurance to qualify so you have it starting January 1st of 2014, which is when these plans take effect, you need to purchase that insurance before December 15th. And it might be wise to do it even a little bit before because, you know, the website might be a little <laughs> crowded at that time, too. And we'll, we'll take questions when you guys have the microphone, because when you ask in the audience here, we can't hear you, and the other folks can't hear you. So we are going to get to questions, um, I think, now. right about now. Yeah. So if you just raise your hand, we'll have the microphone brought to you, and I'll point. Thank you. Um, I was on the website for four hours today. Literally, I'm not exaggerating. And a wonderful woman on the phone was trying to help me. She was incredibly knowledgeable and really kind and smart. And she tried to fix the glitch that was wrong with my being able to continue. It kept saying, are you a naturalized citizen? Are you, um, were you born here? And I was born here, but it didn't register. She tried to fix it. She couldn't fix it. She said she was going to put in a note saying that it needed to be fixed. I tried to go on later. I couldn't get on in some other way. It didn't work. <laughs> so that's one thing that I wanted to point out. I spent four hours today. And, wow. I, and I'm very concerned, and this is a segue into this next question, because I have private insurance that I pay a tremendous amount for now. I am covered. But I was under the impression that I had to get all this finished and done by December 15th if I wasn't someone who was uninsured. Is that incorrect? Is my assumption incorrect? You, you, uh, no, you can, even if you're insured, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, because you want to end your, well, your policy ends on January 1st, doesn't it anyway? It's monthly. Oh, it's monthly. You didn't get a cancellation notice. I got a letter from my insurer saying, you don't have to do anything except pay this additional $60 a month that we're giving you for a new, but it's monthly. Well, then in that case, you don't have to do it by December 15th, I don't think, because the open enrollment goes through through March 31st. See, I, was, I thought open enrollment was only for people who were uninsured and that you had to get into this by December 15th. I don't think so. If there's somebody who can tell me, I don't think that's right. If, but Let's get the microphone yeah. to you. Yeah, Thanks. you have till the 31st of March. <laughs> yeah, that sounds. Yeah. Hey, wait, we can't. We can't have you unless you're talking to the, on the microphone. Let's 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 try here real quick, and then we'll get back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, two quick questions. Other than ask Emily <laughs> or covered California staff, are there specialties, sp healthcare specialties, or is a specialty? emerging now that, that, that we help. will go to. So that is question one. That's a very and good the other, question. other question that I have that you didn't cover at all. I'm a small business owner. Yeah. Did not offer insurance to our staff. And I'm already getting wooed by God knows what kind of firms they are yeah. that cover your employees, no out of pocket. I mean, it's not going to cost you anything. You're going to get almost all wiped out by your tax credit and all of that stuff. I have not led them in because I don't even understand what they're talking mm -hmm. about. So what is the implication on a small business owner who did not offer insurance? What is my impetus now to offer them? Is there, does Obamacare make a difference? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll start with that and, and Stephanie can continue. If I, you are not required as a small business owner to offer your employees insurance and under the law that is empl employers with less than 50 full-time equivalent workers. Uh, the, the law was supposed to require businesses with more than 50 to offer insurance to their employees starting January 1st of, of 2014, but it got delayed. That doesn't go into effect till January 1st of 2015. But for you as a small business owner, if you fall under that definition, you don't have to. Uh, there is an exchange called SHOP, or it's part of Covered California, but it is for small business owners. If you want to shop around there, I would call Covered California and not mess with others or certified brokers, you know, uh, that special, that who are certified by Pub Covered California. You can see if you can find affordable coverage, and some small businesses will qualify for tax credits to help them uh, pay for the insurance that they're going to offer their employees. Yeah, and what they did um, is because it, the small business market 
for insurance is, is a tough one, as you're probably well aware, because you have, especially if you're a really small business, you have this small pool, one person gets sick, and it, it just wipes out everything and, and messes up the whole structure and the premium because the risk pool is so small. So the idea behind the SHOP networks, it's an acronym, I can't remember what it stands for, but it's just S-H-O-P, that's for the businesses. And they've negotiated, the state's negotiated, um, so that your the, the benefits you would get are similar to what a large company would get. So now it's you don't have these really high costs that you would otherwise face. And the idea behind that is to encourage business owners, small business owners, to provide health insurance to their employees. Um, but again, as Emily mentioned, you don't have to do it. And that's something that's been very confusing because a lot of small business people think, oh my gosh, I'm going to be mandated to provide insurance. However, <laughs> the law does is going to require paperwork. You're going to have to prove how many employees do you have and you know to make sure that you don't fall into the category where the employer mandate, which is supposed to take effect in 2015, um, to prove that you don't have to provide it. But it is a good place to, to shop. I did a piece um, on the small businesses. There, can you, I can't hear you too. I'm sorry. We have to get the microphone to you. Are there incentives? To there's provide? tax. Yes, there are. There's tax credits, and again, there are a little. There, are, there's not. It's not something I can explain here, but it has to do generally with the 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 smaller you are, the bigger the tax credits will be, and they will be there for a couple of years again to get you in there to help offset your costs. So some businesses are going to find really great breaks, and other ones aren't going to find such great breaks depending upon how large they are, pretty much. And your first question was a very good one. He asked uh, where where you can get help anywhere other than Ask Emily, and, and there is nowhere. I'm I'm sorry, I'm not. <laughs> I'm I'm joking. Um, <laughs> um, uh, That's it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, it's an excellent question, actually, because there's a lot of frustrations about that. Covered California is supposed to be certifying thousands upon thousands of these people. They're calling navigators and educators, and also uh, brokers. Um, who are, they're going to certify, so insurance agents who are certified by Covered California who can help walk you through the pro uh, process. And there have been a lot of complaints. And we actually, I keep looking at Tom. Tom Frecker is sitting right here. It's funny because um, he's a source of mine, and I've only known him through Ask Emily. He commented, he emailed me early on, and I've actually quoted him in a story. Are you certified, Tom? Um, this is not a commercial, but <laughs> how was your experience getting certified? Well, hang on, let's get the oh, microphone, yeah. Tom. <laughs> yeah, I'm certified nuts. <laughs> it was a difficult thing, but, you know, I've been doing insurance for 40 years. I figured it out. So. Okay. <laughs> Some okay, of the so nonprofits that are getting certified, so this, a lot of this, the enrollers are going through these nonprofit organizations, and they supposedly have these, the paperwork's like 60 pages long. It's just bogging down, and they're trying to, we have somebody here who's familiar with this, they're trying to ease that bottleneck. I was just having conversations with some folks, and Peter Lee is finding when he shows up these events, 1,500 people want information, and there's no... There's no uh, certified enrollee specialist, so he had to deputize a bunch of people who'd gone through the training, but he just had to deputize them and get them in there to start answering questions. There's a hunger for the information. I, I would, um, I might, uh, I'm not used to making this kind of suggestion, but given that those navigators and educators go through a pretty quick training, I might try to find a certified agent and because they who has experience. Um, but I'm not. Suggesting one they can the, help you on over the other, California. but they yeah. can help you even if you're eligible for covered California. They can help you on the open market and covered California, but you have to make sure they're certified. It, what I'll do is there's an Ask Emily Facebook page, and you guys should like it. And I will go and post on the Facebook page tomorrow. I hope I remember. There's a link to. Uh, certified agents and certified navigators and educators. You can put in your zip code and find these people supposedly. And on the homepage of Covered California, CoveredCA.com, there's a list of events in your area that are run by these nonprofit groups and that sort of thing where they're trying to s sign people up. And depending on where you live, there might be something happening close to you. We had one comment right here about the... Hi, yes, my name is Mary Donnelly Crocker, and I'm the executive director of Young and Healthy in Pasadena. Um, we, are do, we are organizing the local community around this. And if anybody would like one of our information, I brought them tonight, because throughout the city there are five or six safety net providers. We're all getting certified. Because 
we're all in the tedious process of getting certified. We actually have a list of certified brokers who are already certified now. And if you contact me, I can give you those numbers tomorrow. Um, if you have Medi-Cal questions, we can enroll you now. <laughs> Um, so there's a process, a whole process that's happening in Pasadena where we are creating a community-wide appointment system where you call one of two numbers and we will find someone who can, who's certified to, to help you do this. That's great. I think we're going to be seeing more of that, don't you agree, as, as the people get through, yeah, these organizations get through this laborious uh, process of getting folks certified. So that's sort of a long answer to your question. Great. Thank you so much. We have more questions over here. Thank you. Sorry. We'll start yeah, on the edge. Hi. My name is Sherry Davis Johnson, and I am a certified agent. Oh. You okay. cannot find me on the website because uh -huh. it's a glitch. Yeah. Uh. I understand that this is a problem that people are unable to get answers that they need. So I have designed a workshop that will be held over the next five months, once a month, at the Pasadena Central Library. The first one is on this Friday at 10 o'clock in the morning. And if you have a business or if you want to get enrolled individually or you're having a problem with the website, don't have computer skills or internet access, you can come there. I will have agents there to assist people in getting enrolled. How many folks do you have in your group who got enrolled? Uh, have, who are there certified? will be seven people there that are enrolling at the Pasadena Central Library at 10 a.m. on Friday the 22nd. That's the first of them. The next one is December 17th. Thank you. Oh, she's going to hang on to it. Yeah. Okay, I'm Leslie Coca, and I'm the president of the Girls Health and Justice Institute, and I want to talk about the ultimate kid glitch. In 1965, Medicaid federal law uh, excluded all inmates of public institutions, and that means that every child in California who's incarcerated in a government-owned facility loses or has their medical benefits suspended. This is costing the state of California about $400 million a year. I'm writing a piece with the Kaiser Medicaid Commission on this, and we have the only medical screen for incarcerated girls in the country. But really, I just want to redefine for this group, and hopefully for you, the issue of exemption. These kids are excluded. They fall into what I call, unpopularly, a medical black hole. So that when a child gets detained and has epilepsy or is miscarrying, getting, those public rec getting the records from providers is very difficult. So I would like to see this issue enter the public discourse because we can get Medicaid waivers and provide continuity of care and potentially not only improve the health of this population, but also reduce recidivism in the future. So it's a huge issue for California, and it doesn't come up enough. So we'd really love your help with it. Thank you. You should take my email after. <laughs> Go ahead. And we'll... Hi, I'm Teresa Padua, and I'm the director of the Hollywood Sunset Free Clinic. We are working with California Health Collaborative, a health educator uh, from Covered California, and they are coming into our clinic on a regular basis now. Uh, we think that at least 15 to 20 percent of our population will qualify. Okay. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to ask you about is the latest information. I think it came out June 2013 from, um, I think it's California Healthcare Foundation, statistical data that had to do with, of course, 5.2 million that are uninsured and 2.6 million, I understand, that will be covered. And the rest, the 3.1 million, for various reasons are not covered or will not be covered according to the statistics that they're anticipating for 2015. I was wondering if you could respond on that. Well, there's a, there's a number, I think actually the uninsured in California is something like 7 million, it's even more, but there's a 5.3 who would qualify to buy, who would qualify to get insurance, and I think about half of those would qualify for subsidies on the exchange, but they're not going to go. There's just a number of reasons why people don't go and get insurance, and there's a number of reasons why people won't go get um, Medi-Cal. I was talking to somebody because I'm working on a Medi-Cal story right now, and, um, and they know it's, it's going to be this challenging population. First of all, there's, it's, it's a harder to reach population sometimes. And secondly, there's just a number of issues why people won't 
go and get it. I have friends who, who I know would qualify or their kids would, and they're saying, no, I'm not going to stand in those lines and so forth to try to get it. Well, the idea with Covered California is that there's supposed to be a seamless interface. So you put in your information, oh, you qualify for Medi-Cal. And they say, here, boom, they put you into the Medi-Cal um, pathway. And so um, I've heard different things. I haven't checked that out just recently. As of, They said they're trying to get that up next year, and then I've heard that maybe it's starting, it'll be sooner, or maybe it's up now, I'm not sure. Um, but that's the idea. But even so, there's big issues with Medi-Cal. So all this stuff is gonna be bumpy. I mean, it's gonna be really bumpy. So people may not wanna even participate in that, or they might see Medi-Cal as some handout that they don't wanna take or something, but. Don't forget, too, that uh, people who are in the country illegally are not are not eligible for any of these benefits. So that's gonna be a large portion of the people who remain uninsured in California. And ironically, studies have showed, polls done on this have showed that many of them believe that they are eligible. So there's, a, you know, again, there's a lot of confusion, mainly, well, there's reasons why there's confusion, but there's, the law wasn't really discussed once it was passed and now, now there's this big brouhaha. You've been very patient, thank you for waiting so long. Why has Covered California uh, decided to put off for a year uh, rating the policies, which they agreed originally to rate the policies? And secondly, Mr. Lee from Covered California put out a number of 60,000 on November 12th. Uh, the federal government said it was 35,000. Can you explain the disparity in the numbers? Is that padding? Is that wishful thinking? They're different dates. Uh, They're different dates, yeah. Yeah, 31,000 was for the month of October, as I recall. Up, up to November 2nd or something like that, right? I think 35. Okay, um, 35. And then, or something, but then up through November, October 1st through November 12th was the 60,000, and he claimed that there was a lot more people were starting to sign up, that there was gaining momentum in those first days of November. So it so, depends on if you believe him or not. So. Well, the, this, the, a story I just read today, too, um, that was doing a, a summary of the different states, it's now, it kind of makes sense, really, but now that everybody's starting to go, okay, i got to pay attention, um, this deadline's coming up, and um, so supposedly in November, things really took off. They were getting about 2,000 a day, where they just weren't getting that in October, and partially, too, because... The, the glitches in the site were, were more pronounced then, although they sound pretty bad for you today. That was like hideous. Not, not healthcare.org, so there right. were no glitches no. uncovered California. There, there are glitches uncovered California, yeah, too. There were, there were, you know, the earlier days, there were glitches on it. And, and there again, still are. As, the, as this yeah. lady had just mentioned today, four hours on it. I mean, I don't know that that's the norm, but, um, but there was... Let's I don't the know the answer to the rating policy question. Oh, yeah, I don't know that either. There's a lot of things that were supposed to happen. You know, for instance, the doctor search tool and, and hospital search tool was supposed to be up and running. And, um, you know, the, the seamless it, it medical. but it's not working well. Right, but, you know, yeah. uh, running so that it's, it's, it works yeah. for you. And then also Medi-Cal, too, the seamless Medi-Cal portal. You know, there's just stuff that is not happening now. And, um, yeah, that's it's a really good question, and I don't, I'm not sure what the answer is. But. Sorry. Yeah, thank you for asking it. We have uh, two people right here in the center. Thanks. Um, I'm curious because we were online today also. We didn't have the four-hour delay. But I, I saw that there's four plans in our zip code. And one of them is Anthem Blue Cross. And we're on Anthem Blue Cross. <laughs> so th th I was trying to figure out, okay, so what's Molina? What's... Uh, what is it, LA Care and the other one? Kaiser. No, Kaiser wasn't there, HealthNet. And then my other question was Kaiser. I mean, that wasn't listed. So it's trying to figure out that. And then do I go through the insurance broker I've used? Do I ask him if he's certified to mm -hmm. do this? Mm -hmm. You can. Yeah. You can, or you can call Covered California, you can do it online. But yeah, if you have an insurance broker and you trust that person, uh, maybe start there. Does that person, how do they make money? I mean, that's my, uh, they make a commission, but through Covered California? I don't, well, yes, I, yes, Tom? The insurance company. Oh. The insurance, yeah, yeah that, isn't that right? They give a, like you would normally through an insurance company, but the. Yeah, but, the, but also the certified enrollers make money too. I think it's $48 per person who is signed up. It would go to the, the it's all, it's, they're all making money. There's issues about, you know, that too, questionable. Question was that so if it's, I'm on Anthem Blue Cross and I have my doctor that I've been going to for my OBGYN for 30 years, and at this point, I mean, I, I don't know how to find. I mean, other than calling him, call call mm -hmm. call him and call Anthem. 
Call them both. Call them both. Absolutely. Yeah. And he may not know. I mean, like I said, I have somebody who's saying, you know, I called my doctor. I'm doing, uh, that's another story I'm working on, but, but, you know, do this narrow networks thing and what you need to do and what the problems are there. Um, but you want to call the insurance company and find out they should have the listing of it. That was something else that Covered California was going to have was, um, you know, the, the doctor search tool. People want to see what the entire network shows, and it, it's, not, it's not designed for that. They're trying to make it, I'm told, they're trying to make it more robust to accommodate that. Yeah, one of the things that the broker, I spoke to him like a month ago, and he was going to look into stuff, and then I had to go away. But he said, do you care if you go to Cedars or you go to UCLA? And I said, I don't care anymore because they're so expensive, they should be slapped. So, so some are being omitted. I mean, you'll find plans that don't have them at all on there. So if you do go to Cedars or UCLA, you may find that you sign up for this great, you know, one and you don't get to go there anymore. Cedars is covered by no covered California plan as far as yeah, I understand. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, yeah. they're going to get slapped for it. And 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 I said, "No, I don't care anymore because they are just insane." Thanks. Is there there was another question over there to the my left. Oh, um sorry. I now get uh um I have a flex plan that um, is a HRA, and I used to, I um, use Anthem because they're $1,000 a month cheaper than the group insurance offered through the flex plan. So I was, um, for the past uh, a few years, I've been able to get my premiums refunded back to me through the flex plan. And I was just notified that they cannot refund my premiums on individual plans anymore, only under group insurance. And I don't understand the logic to that. And I asked them, well, if I go through Cover California, will I then get my premiums refunded to me? And they said no, um, because the ones in, in, in Cover California are also individual plans. So I was interested. I don't understand the logic behind that. And the second question I have is, if that's not an option for me, can I, there's one about where um, I get pre-taxed, uh, I get money from, instead of paying, paying my tax, or a certain F amount of my taxes. FSA, FSA, a flexible spending account, or a HSA, a health savings H account? HSA. The uh -huh. one that rolls over, that one, your money rolls over every year. Yes. I've actually gotten a lot of questions about HSAs and FSAs, uh, and I have not answered them yet. So I don't know the intricacies, to be honest with you, of, of this. I can't answer this edu in an educated way, but there might be somebody here who can. I was told today, because I have a health savings account with Kaiser, that if you're not buying, and if you're getting out of a private policy into an Affordable Care Act and you're getting the deduction, you, there's a, the only the bronze 60 HSA is available. That's the one choice that's available in my zip code. So I said to them, well, I have $6,200 in my HSA. What do I do with that? Well, you can use it to go to the dentist or you can use it to buy, I don't know what. I mean, but it's you cannot use it to pay your premium. You cannot use it to pay your yeah. drugs. You cannot use it. I need to do a column on If, if on you this. buy a plan <laughs> so. on the Covered California site, you're saying, because and you have an HSA. Only, I don't want to buy a bronze plan just to use an HSA. So, right. And I need that tremendous deduction to fit into the Affordable Care Act that I get on my taxes from the HSA. It's very, very convoluted yeah. and complicated. So that's something that we will both be yeah. checking out. Yeah, yeah cuz it's an interesting. There's a lot of intricacies in, you know, getting into the weeds and all this stuff that really yeah. starts to matter when you start making some decisions yeah. on it. I'm sorry, I can't mm -hmm. answer that. We but have I'll, a, a I'll hand up and oh, do you do, go ahead. <laughs> if you're already heading that direction, she'll get over to you in a moment. Sure. Um, getting back to the 9.5%, is that a ceiling that the uh, employer can charge you uh, as far as your rate? So, really the law created it so that anyone For the employer Right, created for the employer so that any child or spouse added on was obviously going to go up because you could only charge the employee a ceiling of 9.5% of their income. The other question I have, which is a little more complicated, some uh, health care policies are under the ERISA law and some are under the ACA law. Can you explain the... Are you kidding me? 
No, I can't. On this you one. cannot explain the difference between ERISA and ASA? No, I actually have a question on this one, and it's one that uh, I haven't taken on yet. Sorry. This is how she gets people to read her column. Yeah. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> keep, please keep coming back. Yeah. So with the ASA, did that create the, the child spouse uh, conundrum where it was it now is more expensive to to bring your spouse or, or child in because of the 9.5 percent it, ceiling i don't think so well yeah. how it's not, it not it's be? more expensive it's not if you can only if it's now a ceiling yeah. how could it not add to not that that it's a ceiling ce that's what i think he was saying that it's a ceiling on how much they can charge you it's it's, it's oh it's not no. a ceiling that's a definition of a, affordability so they can um but but yeah actually employers they have that's the 9.5 percent when employers are going to be Okay, let me say it. In 2015, when employers will be penalized, large employers for not offering insurance, they also would be penalized if they didn't. They don't offer affordable insurance, and that's the definition of affordable. If it costs you more yeah. than 9.5% of your gross and previously, they happened. could have charged you at say 12, 13%. And now, because it's 9.5%, obviously, they're going to make it up when you try to bring your spouse in or your child in. But they if already that makes do. Sense, they already do in many cases. They, already they may already do, prices. but now that you have a 9.5% ceiling that they can be charged by the employer, someone's going to make up that money. And it's going to be you adding your spouse in or child. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. This is the stuff that, I mean, right now, so much of the discussion has been, well, first of all, political. And, um, and then, you know, now people are starting to go, okay, what, what does this law have? So we're now getting into that. The stuff you're bringing up, too, and that, that you brought up here, these are things that when we start actually going into this law and seeing how it affects us individually, we're going to find a bunch more questions. And, um, and I think, you know, there's so many scenarios that uh, are going to be um, coming up that we're going to have to address, but we really aren't going to know them until they start hitting us, which you're obviously pointing out some here, but um, we're going to address those as they start coming on. Right now, we're just going to focus on some of the more you know, basic stuff, but we appreciate that because I think it informs our reporting too. So, Okay. Um, here. Hi. Um, I am a certified educator counselor for Cover California uh, for Crystal Stars, which is one of the grantees, nonprofit organization. And we did go through a three-day training to get certified where we did go through that 60-page plus book about every single thing, and yet we still have questions as scenarios come up. Um, mm -hmm. So not everybody has all the answers, um, even Cover California, because that's, that's where we got our training. That's a very good point. Um, yeah. One yeah. of the questions that was raised at our training was this, um, the HSA, FSA situation. They couldn't answer it. It was on the. It was put on the parking lot to be answered later. Um, I ha the question, the issue about the 9.5. It's not a ceiling for the employer. What it is is household income um, te test to, um, to prove that it's unaffordable for you as an employee, based on your household income. Um, then the my question was because I had a situation that it came. I have, I have two. Um, maybe you've heard something similar. Um, if your income changes within, you know, in the year, which is, is called qualifying event, you can change. The question was, if that happens, um, where you report your income change, therefore you either, your tax credit can go up or down based on that income, are you then able to change uh, plans based on that? I, it's not a, I don't think it's a qualifying event in the way that you can switch plans or get or, or drop your plan. You would, if your income change is covered, California says you should call them immediately so you can deal with the change in the tax credits. But I don't think it's a qualifying event. It's a qualifying event when you lose your job-based coverage if you lose a job. But it's, I don't, I don't think this is. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it is either. You just, yeah. but you do want to inform them. So, yeah, so that was my, I guess, Clarification, it wasn't a qualifying event in the sense that you'd get married, divorced, have child, lose a child, et cetera. But um, in this situation that I had, a, a person, um, their coverage changed because they changed employment, right? So the question was, if I get insurance now and then I'm going to change jobs later and it changes and my income changes, um, what happens? And so I said, well, your tax credit's going to change because you're going to report different income. But then my question was, well, if that happens, would you have the option of changing your plan? Because... Initially, you had 300 credit. If their new employer offers insurance that they want to take advantage of, I believe 
Can they? I believe, do you know the answer to that one? Well, I, I, we're kind of mixing things up here, yes. aren't we, though? Because we're talking about job-based right. insurance, and then we're talking about, so, you, so presumably, if you have job-based insurance, you're not going to be on buying in the individual market. Right. So if you're buying in the individual market, and let's say you're a freelancer, and your, your income, maybe that's... Maybe Do you know the answer to this? You need a microphone because we can't hear you. Hang on. Stand by. Wait. Hold on. <laughs> Rewind. The qualifying event could be that it's now unaffordable for that person. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. so okay, so that can be a qualifying event. Great. That could be a qualifying event. Okay. Right. <laughs> Even though the income went up, it may not. It may be more than they could afford. It, it would change the amount of money that they get from the subsidy, but it would not be affordable for the family to be able to afford it. So that would be an opportunity for them to make a change. Mm -hmm. In theory, I can't say for sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We have a question right here. Yeah. Oh, she's gonna finish that up and gotcha. So to wrap up, my question is: if that's the case, and they they it's considered now unaffordable. Uh, do they have the option not only of changing plans but also of changing their tier? A changing plan is, I mean, I think that would be the same thing. Changing if you can your, change your yeah, because you I are this by yeah. essentially they're the same similar plans within those tiers. So I think that would be correct, and we have to confirm that though. Good question. <laughs> and we have a this right here in the second row, please. Hi, my question is if. Um, I buy my individual policy, and then I relocate out of state due to work. How does that affect? I just answered this one in my latest column. Um, covered California, and you purchase plan through Covered California, is that the question? Yeah, Covered California doesn't offer any plans with out-of-state networks. So you, if you move out of state, whatever your new state is, you would have to buy a plan from their exchange or on the open market. But moving from one state to, to the other does trigger a special enrollment period for you. So you would be able to switch in that, in that new state. And we have, And I can kind of go off of that. What about college age students doing that, like going out of state for college? And even like um, for community college students, you, you mentioned universities cover with a healthcare plan. What about community college? Like for example, Pasadena City College. I think I pay like a twenty-six dollar health fee for each semester. But does that mean that I'm covered? Or you should check with Pasadena City College. But most university health plans, I think I talked to the American Council on, Edu on Education, said that they will be meeting the Obamacare requirement. But I just double check. And I don't know if the health fee is the plan, too, so you want to make sure that that's yeah. a plan, not just a fee to go Right, yeah, yeah, the, some fee yeah. you have to pay, right. Yeah. And uh, we have a, a, a person here up in the front row, and we should look over here, too, sorry. Um, you, you mentioned before that people should investigate whether the physician that they're hoping to keep or have is not going to close the window on, let's say, the Silver 73 anthem. You mentioned before that people need to do the research yeah. about the doctors. What about Kaiser? Is, is Kaiser in another world in terms? Yes. No, it's really, no, it depends I, on who you ask. No, because, yeah. well, well, as someone who's been in Kaiser for 39 years, I'm concerned that I'm switching from my grandfather policy to, if I decide to stay in Kaiser, a much cheaper policy that's great for me. But is, is the doctor thing going to be stratified in Kaiser the way you were concerned about? That's a question I, I've been wondering myself. I don't know. Yeah, I don't I think don't, so. I don't believe so. I Kaiser is so. its own yeah. world, so they are. It sure so is. The <laughs> reason, the reason, so it's, a, it's an HMO, right? So the reason that the other ones are changing is because they're trying to negotiate rates with these doctors who they have individual contracts with all these doctors and providers. So they're trying to negotiate rates at lesser amounts and all other things that are going on. With Kaiser, that's the Kaiser world. So it just plans within Kaiser, but you will want to check, you know, what your co-pays and deductibles and stuff like that, because some people... Like my mother, who's here, has a Kaiser plan that's you know really a great one in terms of the amount of money. My daughter has one that's um, fairly expensive. In fact, one that she's choosing not to stand. So um, you really have to look at all the different plans within it. But with regard to those doctor networks, I understand they're just you won't have to worry about that with Kaiser. Like that's the only one you won't have to worry about. So we got it. We got it. it well, there's there's yeah. She's saying that Kaiser is expensive. Yeah, it is. It is the most expensive plan they've got. They've got, yeah, they are. Thanks. 
Um, hi, thank you for this. Um, in terms of timelines um, and, and time, what is the uh, amount of months that you have to have health insurance next year so that you're not penalized? I'm sorry Nine to months. Cover that. Nine months. Yeah, if you you will you don't have to pay a tax penalty if you go without insurance for less than three months. Okay. Which which allows you to get it up to the the cutoff date of March thirty first. Not or really. No, actually, that's weeks? complicated because if you sign up March thirty first, your your plan won't that's even start right. till March first. But they're they're gonna the federal government's saying we're not gonna penalize you next year because it's a one time thing. So even if you sign up March thirty first, the federal government's saying we won't penalize you next year. But that's this is the only year that the open enrollment period is that long, mm -hmm. but three months. Okay, and a follow up to that, people that travel, live into countries, um, what's the minimum amount of days per year that you have to be here in order to have to have to buy insurance? I just answered this one too. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, if you are American, U.S. citizen living abroad, uh, you don't have to comply with the Obam Obamacare requirement if you live abroad 330 days of the year. So pretty much full time, you come home to visit. Five weeks. And say hi to five the family. weeks. Yeah, yeah. You have to just five weeks left over. So, if you don't, then you need to comply. Uh, let's do. Actually, can we grab the woman in this row, and then we'll go to the back there? I had a question about the stair step eligibility for Medicaid, uh, Medi-Cal for children zero to nineteen. Um, do you know about that? My understanding is is that that's going to change in a positive way, at least theoretically. Can you comment on real access for that population? We Perfect. have an expert here. Can I hand it off to somebody in the audience? Sure. Jenny Catlov, the Children's Partnership, is here. Can you take it, Jenny? Yes. The stair step. Is this on? Hmm. Sorry. The stair step was really. Um, to when we had the Healthy Families Program. And so the changes that you're referring to is that um, in 2012, through the budget process, the Healthy Families Program, which is our state's CHIP program, was eliminated. And all of those children in the year 2013 are transferring over to the Medi-Cal uh, program. And so what that means is children in families up to the, um, I'm sorry, in families with incomes up to 250% of poverty, which is 58,000 for Actually, a I family know, of four. I know that one. Let me. I think it's it. about 58,000 for a family of four will be eligible for Medi-Cal. Okay. And so there's no okay. more stair stepping. So it spends it. And then we have one more question here. Let's go ahead back with the gentleman in the corner. Oh, one, two more questions. One and one, and then we're going to be done. Yes. <laughs> Two, two, one thing is that the, uh, Bowie University came out with its uh, university health care uh, plan for next year for their students and went from $100 to $1,800. So you might want to take a look at that. Even though it is not a university in California, uh, university plans have skyrocketed. But the real question, right, you want to care, do Covered California because that's what you want to showcase it here tonight. Demographics. Why isn't Covered, Co Covered California giving us demographics on who's enrolling, Gender and ages, at least. Day after tomorrow, and, they're giving it. And the number of Medi-Cal versus the number of people who are actually paying. They did. The they did give Medi-Cal, didn't they? It's they gave, far more than. They gave Medi-Cal. They yeah. did give Medi-Cal. I think it was eighty thousand Medi-Cal as compared Some, to uh, sixty thousand for the signups. And then they are giving on my birthday on Thursday. Um, they're going to be giving the. Um, uh, the actual demographics. We were all waiting for demographics. I thought they were coming out last week. P but Peter Lee there. has said that it's older people who are uh, signing up so far. Which is, yeah, understandable. Would Could that create, now Zeke Emanuel said that that would create a death spiral. Do you think that would create a death spiral for the ACA? I don't know. I don't know. We're going, we're going, we're trying to stay away from many of the yeah. politics right now. I mean, what we do know is that you're walking to, whoops, answer the, ask the question there. What we do know is that the young and healthy are definitely needed in any insurance pool. That's for certain. And we also know that, that the younger you are sometimes, the more you're going to wait to the last minute to do things. And so they expect a rush of the young ones. And we also know that the young folks do want the young invincibles, we call them up to age 35. They do want insurance. They just want affordable insurance. So they're not saying I'm invincible. I don't need it. They're 
they're saying, I want it, but make it affordable to me. So it's going to be interesting to see, but I think we're going to see many more, as Peter Lee said, more of the older people now who've been waiting to get it. They're like ready to go. And then the other ones who are required to get it, it's going to be, you know, they're, they're not going to be up front. And then one more question we've got, and then we're going to wrap up for tonight. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. This is a comment, not, not really a question. I drove here to see Emily from Fountain Valley because she and I became email friends <laughs> over a lot of different issues that I needed her to answer and she needed me to answer one or two. But I wanted to mention the, about the doctor networks. If you're looking at a Blue Shield plan, Blue Cross plan, Kaiser, not Kaiser, but health net plan, whether it's inside or outside of the exchange, you can go directly to the Anthem website and they have a provider network on there. And if you just click on it, it'll say on the exchange or off the exchange. So I think that's very helpful. But call them too, because I've also heard that there's problems there because they're in such disarray sure. over who's in the network that don't don't just rely on it, get sure, backups that, written. You but know. that's that's a good starting place. Yes, absolutely. Um, like I said, I'm a certified agent. We've done about 50 applications so far, and we're doing them by mail. And we're sending in certified mail to the covered California to eliminate the problems with the website. Okay? And my recommendation to you, and here's a young lady here that's going to have a seminar on Friday at the library. My recommendation to all the people here, if you have super questions, is go ask somebody who does have the knowledge and who's done it a few times. And then the last thing I want to say about Emily is... I, I didn't invite him here, I promise. <laughs> hey, I forgot to bring my person. She, she, she's a small, she is one person out there in the wind and flailing against all of the, the things that are coming. So I don't think we can expect her to know all of these things. And if you get a thousand questions, you're only going to be able to answer, you know, 500 of them. <laughs> God. Well, we, we really appreciate the questions, though. They're, they're really good so, questions. Thank, thank you, you so Keep up much. the good work. Thank you, thank you. Thank you to all of you. <laughs> well, I don't know if we're off now, but if are the mic's still running for one more comment. One more. It's got to be quick. I'm in trouble now. I'm officially, we can't get you in the back. Sorry. One sentence comment. I now see the wisdom of Nancy Pelosi's infamous comment. Let us pass it so we know what's in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you all again. Thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you.